Okay, we're going to move on to the two staircases now. Uh, we'll work with the, the simplest one, is the entrance steps. There, there isn't any accommodation below those steps, so, so this could be a solid mass. Okay, so what we need to do is trace this in the coordinate system that suits that plane. Okay, when I mean plane, you can see we have a kind of a plane defined by the drawing. Okay, so look at the cube, you can see which one it's kind of hinting at there. This would be the front coordinate system. Okay, so sorry I didn't introduce this, this is the th part three of our House T AutoCAD 2020 drawing exercise. Okay, so I'll choose the front coordinate system. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer. Okay, this will be 3D floor concrete. So I'll use FLR for this, I think. Floor, oops, keep the capitals. Floor conch G. Okay, and we'll give it a concretey looking color. Just use a pale gray. Okay, and make it current. And close. Okay, I'm going to need the perpendicular object snap on this one, but I can call on it just once. Okay, so it's a polyline from endpoint, shift and right mouse, perpendicular, over to the bottom step, trace around, and then close. Okay, we want to move that object now from this endpoint to this one. Okay, so let's move, pick the shape, enter, base point, destination point. Okay, if you've been having trouble doing any subtraction or picking objects in space, then try pressing the key F6. Okay, we're wanting to, to turn the dynamic UCS off. Okay, I should have mentioned that when we started, when we did the work here. You may find that switching dynamic UCS off makes things a lot simpler. Okay, now you'd expect this object to extrude while we're in the front coordinate system, because that's the way it's facing. Okay, but the objects remember their their birth coordinate system. So if I go back to the world coordinate system and then extrude this, it will still extrude this way. It won't try to extrude up the way. That would be like a smudge. That can be done in, in Rhino, actually it works in Rhino, but in AutoCAD it kind of remembers its its direction. So extrude, pick the stair shape, enter and we're going to this point, or this, or this, or this. Any of those would do. Okay, check your model. Do a little shade. Yep, we've got a little staircase going down now. Okay, so this is the ground level out at the street. And then the ground slopes up gently, up to the back door position over here. Okay, back to 2D wireframe for working. And we're wanting to work with this staircase now. Okay, so I think we should turn off. We seem to be on level layer zero there. I should be on layer floor concrete. Okay, I'll have that flipped back to layer zero. Okay, we'll switch off some layers. And I use this little icon here on off switch okay so we'll pick the white we don't need to see the red for now for now okay we don't need to see the blue either or the lettering okay that's sufficient just now okay and what we need to do is do a little bit of 2d work here okay we won't need this line oops Aha, right we 
we pasted this in, we did a copy and paste here. So this at the moment is a block. If I hover on it, it says it's a block. We need it to say it's lines or polyline. So X, enter, pick the block, enter. It now says these are lines. Okay, we don't need this line, but we do need a little bit of this one. Okay, what we're going to have is the very topmost step, the first kind of tread at the top, to be concrete. Then we'll change to a wooden material for the rest of the floor. Okay, so I need to put in the length of one tread onto here. So I'll just copy the riser, enter from endpoint to endpoint. Okay. And I should be able to shorten this line just using the grip there, escape, and then I'll delete that line. Right, there's a couple of ways we could we could deal with this, but whatever happens, we need to be facing this part of the drawing. We need to be in the plane that that drawing is currently sitting in. Okay? And you can see here the cube is kind of giving us a hint again. The right coordinate system. Okay. If there weren't any accommodation below the stair, we could solidify it. We turn it into one big solid lump. Okay. But here there is accommodation. So we've got a couple of options. Okay. I'll show you both. If we ped it a line. Do you want to turn it into a polyline? Yes. So you enter, press enter, then join and grab everything. That line doesn't touch any of these so it can't be joined on. Okay, 33 segments added. Enter to finish. Okay, we've got a polyline there. Now one option would be to offset that to give it some visual thickness offset, let's say 150, okay, we would then close the shape, putting lines at either end, and then fill it with no radius, you can see it starts to join together, still open at this end though, so we fill it again, that's it closed. That's now extrudable. Pick one of these brown little end points, that's our stair. But that's not in a way very realistic how a stair would be built. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll take it back to this point. Okay, so it's not closed yet, we'll take it back another step. No pun intended. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll draw over these. Okay, we wouldn't need that line. Okay, fill it in that position, fill it in this position, and the line across. With ortho on, uh, actually we want the 150 offset there, it should be, should be from that point, shouldn't it? bringing a point across from here with ortho on and then fill it. Okay, so that's looking a bit more realistic. Uh, this is called the waist of the stair. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is put this line on this point and we'll have the waist of the stair being 150. Okay, that will make it look a bit thinner. That's better. Join these together. That looks more like it. Okay, so usually with a precast stair of this type, you would have a smooth soffit to the stair. Okay, so now we can fill it. 
poly line to the normal line and it starts to join together. Also we could have done ped it and join. Okay, and watch what happens when you when you extrude the object goes on to the current layer. The solid is generated on the current layer. So we take it to this point and that's our nice clean 3D kind of precast stair. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll kind of carry on on this video and we're going to look at this wall next. Okay, and this is going to be done in slightly different methods, two different methods actually. So let's create a new layer. This will be 3D wall wood G. 3D wall wood G. I'm going to choose a fairly bright brown and yellow for this, color 31. Make it current and close. Okay, we don't need to see the stairs now. We can hide those. Okay, we've got some stuff here that we can actually delete. We don't need to see it at all now. a green line under that one as well I think but we'll leave that ok well if we switch that off yeah there's the green line, I can delete that right well, let's just make this a bit more visible so you can see it on the video it's a bit dark so let's, let's go for orange for that ok so we're on this side of the wall is in a room but this side of the wall is against the staircase and carries on a bit further up to first floor. So either side of this wall are at different heights. What we'll do is we'll do this side of the wall using what's called thicknesses. Okay, let me just make this a different colour altogether so we, we don't get it confused with the with the wooden colour. Okay, so I want to work in the world coordinate system initially. Back to world and I'm just going to draw some lines on top of these. So three lines and just keeping away from the doorways. Okay. What we'll do is we're going to change these lines to have thickness. So it's the command is change, CH, enter. Okay, let me just put that to the side. Pull this out of it. I want to change these three objects and give them a thickness of 3000. Enter. Sorry, 2000. Get it right, Richard. 2000. Okay, so they're going to the height of the doorway. Okay, escape a couple of times. So these, this is a bit like pulling up a piece of wallpaper from a roll. So it's now a surface, okay, but it's not very editable. We can lengthen it, shorten it, but we can't lift it. And see what happens? It pulls the bottom of the it pulls the bottom vertex up as well. We can trim it if we needed to, because it's still a line. a circle nearby, I can copy the properties of that across to here. So using match properties, MA, we can pick an object and assign its thickness to something else. So don't discount this, it's very crude but it does have its role. It can be used for quite a few different types of objects. Okay, we need a line above this, there is still some wooden panelling above the door. Okay, so we'll copy the purple line up by the height of what's there. Okay, and so we've only got one meter left to get to the underside of the, the floor slab. Okay, so it's, it's a change command again. 
thickness 1000 but we also need to change the layer to 3D wall wood Okay, and this is cheap and cheerful, nice and quick, but in modeling terms it's pretty pretty crude. It leaves us with vertices that don't get properly welded. Okay? Really if if the in the 3D in the rendering software it would run up this line and expect to find another object coming from this corner, from this vertex. When it gets here, it says, uh, hold on. I'm in the middle of a line here. That's not good. I'm in the middle of an edge. That's not good, 3D modeler. What can happen is this could show up as a crack in a rendering. So it's quick and easy, but it's pretty basic. So I'm moving to the other side of the wall now. Now go back to 2D wireframe. Okay, what we need here is actually a framework to work with. Okay, so I'm going to copy the purple lines that we see here upwards. Okay, so I'm going to take these lines okay, and copy them by the height of the doorway. Okay, then copy another one, enter. With author one, if you pick a base point, you can say how far up you want to go. You can see next to my cursor that it says plus Z. Okay, so I want to go up here by 3150. Enter to finish. Right, what we've got there is what we call a wireframe. Okay, and now what we're going to do is put some surfaces onto that wireframe using a command called 3D face. And this shortens to 3F. And what you do is either three sided shapes or four sided. So here I'm going to start with a three sided one. So it's pick, pick, I'm going to turn ortho off, pick, enter because you don't want a fourth side, enter to stop. Okay, we've got a surface here that is much more editable, it can be pulled and pushed in any direction. like an extremely elastic material. Okay, the next 3D face needs to be a triangle as well because we're wanting to avoid the situation we had on here where we left these vertices unattached. It's 3F, 1, 2, 3, enter, enter. Enter to bring back the command. The next one's going to be a larger four-sided one. One, two, three, four. Enter to stop. Enter to bring back the command. Then it's a three sided one. One, two, three. Enter no four sides. Enter to stop. Enter to bring back the command. Next is a three sided one, two, three. Enter, enter, enter. And the last one, a four sided one. One, two, three, four. Enter to stop. Okay, if I shade that. Okay, we see the different surfaces. Okay, we're missing two four sided ones down here. So, once again, always do your modeling. In 2D wireframe, it's, the mathematics is more accurate. So one, two, three, four. Enter to stop. Enter to bring back the command. One, two, three, four. Enter to stop. Now, at the doorways, we've, we've got gaps. We need to fill those gaps. You can see in inside the edges of the doorways. Okay, so what we do, we can use 3D faces again, but you can actually do continuous ones. This makes things much quicker. 3F, enter. 1, 2, 
three, four, three, four. Enter to stop. Enter to bring back the command. One, two, three, four, three, four, three, four. Enter to stop. Now we could just copy those 3D faces across to this one, but let's have a bit more practice. So we use 3D face again. One, two, three, four, three, four, three, four. Enter to stop. Job done. Okay, let's look for other layers that are switched off at the moment. Not leave the frozen ones frozen. I'm just going to bring back the ones that are switched off. So we can see where we are at the end of this video. Okay, let's shade it. Okay, so it's really starting to take shape now. We come in here, through this gap, through this doorway, up the staircase, out to the back if we need to, and then up, we come up to the top floor. Okay, see you in part four.